Hello and welcome to the Cobb Bros Podcast. Ah. <laughs> what the <laughs> f***? Okay, so what uh, was that? Uh, 50 minutes, 30 seconds. <laughs> no, we're going. We're, we're going it. with it. I'll edit out the F word, but <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> that was amazing. All right. Cyrus, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? No, I'm all right. Barn oh, door. It's you okay? Y- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> well, we don't have Oscar or Colton this week, but we do have a special guest this evening. Jordan, welcome. How's it going? Good, good. Alright, what do we got going today? We're drinking. Words. Yeah, a lot of caffeine. caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Some other stimulants. Yeah. <laughs> Known as <laughs> Wingstop. Alcohol. Yeah. Classic hot. Season fries. Bubbly what is your water. choice of alcohol? Barn door. Rum. Always. <laughs> rum. Rum. Yes. Yeah. I went to the casino last night on a date with Grace, and I had all the options for a free cocktail at the gambling machine, and I had two rum and cokes. Rum. 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 Cyrus? Uh, Jack. Jack? Jack. Yeah. <sighs> Me and Jack aren't on good terms. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, what about you? I actually don't drink, but I guess it's vodka. Yeah. Well, good for you on not drinking. I, I'm, I'm there with you. I I have an occasional hard liquor when I go out and maybe a beer at the house, but that I'm I, if I'm out usually I don't yeah. literally drink at home. Yeah, Socially, you you're a rare drinker. Oh. You yeah, Brandon Brandon, <laughs> just, <laughs> you like your drinks. I don't drink a lot, but I no, you don't I like, like it. I like to drink when I get home <laughs> from work. Yeah, I've gotten to that point too. I I like I drank a lot in high school. Oh yeah, I can't, I can't do that anymore. It's just not worth it. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not. You're just spending money to throw it up. I get hangovers <laughs> now. Yeah, just dude, same. I never got a hangover when I was younger, and now if I drink too much, I wake up and I'm like, oh god. At least those first few times, you go hangover free, and you're like, oh, you always hear it's a thing, but you never experience it. <laughs> it was it. like my first f- few years of drinking. Yeah, uh, it was a good bit. Yeah. I would drink literally so much and then wake up the next morning like, yeah, it's a great day, right? And everyone else is like, Shh, why are you just drinking so loud? <laughs> my drug in high school, or my alcohol in high school was Black Ops 3 Dark Matter. <laughs> it was like, it was nightly. I'd go for it. I had to get those knife kills in Battlefield 4. <laughs> hmm. How many tags do you have? A lot. That's a lot. I don't know how many because it doesn't say how many tags you actually have. But if you go onto the dog tags, if you look through them, it says you'd have to count many. them by how many you've collected. Yeah. from last person. I have a lot of a bunch of them. But I, I remember that summer three years ago where I was like, I'm gonna collect your dog tags. I've still never collected. Dude, your I, dog tags. I remember because you were like that, and then I, whoever else was playing with us too, because we were just hopping onto our just empty servers and fucking around, and everyone was like, "We're gonna get your fucking dog tags, Brandon." And I was like, "No, you're not." Yeah, and every time someone would get close, I'd just fucking redeploy. It was like two or three times that I did it, but most of the time I would just kill them. It wasn't me. I never even got close to you. I don't even think I had to redeploy at all. I just killed them. Was it me and Jay, maybe? Probably you two, maybe Wyatt and Cade and Oscar as well. See Anyone that was playing Battlefield 4 with us at that time. There was a big thing because Cyrus is like, I'm going to get your tags. And I was like, fucking try it, bitch. And he still hasn't gotten it. A couple people have. I think Jay did once. Might have been Q. Might have been him, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, a couple people did at one point, but yeah, you've never gotten them. You never got my death bats. Mm-mm. Yeah, my dog tag is actually a death bat. It's not the Avenged Sevenfold one, but... It's a death bat. It, it's, it's a skull with bat wings, and it has horns, so that makes it not a death bat. Fair enough. But it's a bat, death bat with horns. It's fine on my cage. It looks bat dope. with some wings. It's really easy to get if you don't have it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just have to avenge a teammate like five times or something. Is that how you huh. get your Sevenfold? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, tomorrow we got our first game of uh, the actual season, right? One more week. Oh, is it really one more week? Because they cut preseason. Uh, yeah, there's one week in between. They reduced preseason from four to three games. Thanks. So now we have an extra week between uh, preseason and the actual <laughs> NFL starting. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. One more week. One more week. But, but I got my fantasy draft. Dude, drafted. last Sunday my boss was playing the Raiders-Niners game over the radio. Oh, was he? I feel bad for you, man. Oh, yeah, it was ugly. <laughs> I'm glad it was a preseason game. Cause yeah. I, w- I was listening to it, and I heard the score, and I thought he said that the Niners were losing at first. And I then literally my first like hour into work, 
I heard, touchdown Niners. Oh, they recovered an interception or something. Touchdown Niners. And I was like, yeah. oh, shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. They even played Garoppolo at the fucking beginning. They did. He played well. Well, yeah. here's the problem. Uh, Gruden didn't put any starters in the game. Yeah, and that's that's why I thought that they were kicking their ass mm-hmm. so much. I was like, they're playing Garoppolo, and they have that many more points? Like, of course they did. It was the first two drives they had Garoppolo out there playing. Because yeah. they, had, they were switching him. And I'm pretty sure didn't, they, didn't the they score on one of those? Yeah. yeah. So bas- basically, it was they had Garoppolo out there. Then they would put Trey Lance out there. Then Garoppolo again. Then Lance. And then Garoppolo, I guess, was pissed, so he ran it in for a touchdown. Yeah. Like that, I remember that. Yeah, I, I saw that one. I saw yeah. that clip. Yeah. I he, th- he was like, "You're gonna do this to me? I'm just gonna go and score. Now I'm gonna sit down I'm for the rest of the night. Run. <laughs> I'm gonna score it, and then I'm gonna wait for the real season." <laughs> Have we seen any starters play? Garoppolo. Uh, I'm talking the Raiders. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm you trying to think. So, starters. in terms of quarterback, it was Peterman took every snap. It was um, Mar- Mariota and Carr sat out. They did yeah. neither of them played a single snap. Or who was it? We had a, we signed a quarterback just before our first preseason game. I think his name's Connor Cookus. He came and like handed the ball off once. That was it. That was the only other snap taken by a quarterback. And then we cut huh. him after that game. Wow. Because <laughs> we we just needed him as a camp camp body. We really weren't looking for another quarterback. Okay. Fair uh, enough. Yeah. Uh, but as far as, far as starters go, um, I know Jacobs and Drake didn't play. Uh, Waller didn't play. Ruggs, yeah. uh, anybody that we had looking potentially to be a starting wide receiver didn't play. Yeah. Renfro didn't play, which sucks. Fair enough. I love Renfro. You know, they're practicing hard, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, camp report says our defense is a lot better, our starting lineup. Yeah. Because they didn't have Yannick didn't play. Uh, Crosby didn't play. Furrow didn't play. Um, Solomon Thomas didn't play because we picked up Thomas from the Niners. He was a first-round pick from the Niners a few years ago. And, yeah, he didn't play. Huh. All right. Well. All the rookies played, though. Yeah. Every rookie played. That's good. There's number 39, though, Nate Hobbs. We picked him, I think, in the fourth round this year. He's a stud. Really? When we played the Rams, he got, like, he had a fumble recovery, an interception. He blocked a kick. Like, he was all over the field as a rookie. Love it. Yep. So. They pulled him out of the game as soon as he got the uh, blocked kick because they're like, "All right, we're done. We've seen enough. Like yep. you're you're on the team." Good shit. Good for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well wishes to that guy. Hopefully we don't uh, just keep him until he starts showing real potential and then trade him off <laughs> for some useless fucking. I think if second round pick, if, if Nate Hobbs starts to show up and Abram doesn't continue to grow, I think we let Abram go. Yeah. Because Abram, he's a hard hitter, but like I said, he can't cover. Uh, d- d- you're useless as, not useless as a safety but your value is tremendously low because you can't cover yeah if you can't cover why are you playing safety yeah for sure you gotta be real safe <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah I know like barely any of the people that play on the Niners all I know is that last season all of our good players were fucking injured N- do you know any of your running backs I don't know people by their positions. I just know their names. Um, I know that we still have uh, Kittle. I love got, Kittle. That you guys motherfucker's have a machine. The two running backs I was thinking of were Raheem Mostert and Jermichael Hasty. And that was Mostert. That yeah, was because Mostert, Mostert went out last year and Hasty came in. Everyone's like, "Who's Hasty?" And he's like, "I'm Hasty." Yeah, I love Mostert. Was a good player. Matt yeah, Brita. Fucking Brita. When I was playing Madden, he was my boy. I made that player so goddamn uh, good. Brita's on the Bills. Yeah, I thought yep. they traded him. But that one season. Uh, also played for the Mi- Miami. He was on Miami last year. He's a year. good player. Yeah. Hmm. He hasn't been on the Niners since their Super Bowl run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, if, like, a If year. they played Brita like I played Brita in Madden, ooh, <laughs> motherfucker would have been a star. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Anybody 300 plays? points in a season? Like, who does that? I started playing Madden 13. <laughs> who does that? <laughs> I started playing Madden 13 again recently, and I loaded up my franchise. My, three, my quarterback room in Madden 13 is Carson Palmer. Donovan McNabb and Colin Kaepernick. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. That's and then uh, I got Darren McFadden to a 99 overall because I used to just bust him out for like 90 yard t- rushing touchdowns and shit like that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. But yeah, Carson Palmer, man, I forget he was on the Raiders. That's how forgettable his tenure is with us. He played great. We just kept losing. Yeah, we really didn't keep him for long. Nor play we him tra- much. We gave the Browns, I think a first and a second round pick for Palmer and he stayed for two years before he went off to Arizona and was almost MVP. Bastard. Yeah. I'm happy for Palmer, but we love to pick players up and somehow keep them in a shell until we let them go for some Randy Moss feasible or half feasible amount. 
Pe- people forget. They think that uh, Randy Moss went from the Vikings to the Patriots. No, he played two years in Oakland. Yep. And then we, he got tired of the team, and we traded him to the Patriots. And then he balled out. Yeah. When not, he was on that 16-0 and 0 team. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I would always look at Moss, and it just hurt my heart a little. You know, seeing great players do great things on not the Raiders. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Khalil Mack. He was great on the Raiders. He won his only defensive player of the year was with the Raiders. Yeah. So. Yeah. We'll, we'll take that one. With yeah. Us. <laughs> it was uh, 2016. He won defensive player of the year. Because I'll never forget his first touchdown and career interception were on the same play. He picked off Cam Newton and ran it two yards into the end zone. Wow. He picked them off at the goal line because you could see Cam Newton. He threw it. He went, and he faked out the camera because the camera went like this. And you see Khalil Mack's big bare mitts go. (laughs) And then he ran into the end zone. He jumped into the crowd. It was awesome. And then in his first game with the Bears, he did the exact same thing to uh, who? Oh, what was his name? Was Deshaun Kaiser. He was the backup for the Packers because Aaron Rodgers went out in the second quarter with an injury. Fuck. And Kaiser came out and he threw a pick. Khalil Mack picked it up, ran it back. Those are his only two career touchdowns. <laughs> Damn. I remember my dad and I watched that game because it was, you know, it was the first Sunday night game that year, and it was Khalil Mack was on the Bears. It was his first game. And he had a strip sack. He had a fumble recovery, um, had a sack, an interception, and a touchdown. And it was the first time he had done that since that Panthers game when he was on the Raiders. Damn. Yeah. What a spe- What a special, special man. Yeah. And that Panthers game, do you remember when Derek Carr uh, broke his finger? When the ball was snapped and his yeah. finger bent sideways? It was yeah. that same game. Was it really? Yeah, he came back out with a glove on, and that was when he threw two, three touchdowns. The fuck is a wallpaper engine? I don't know. <laughs> it's what Wyatt's doing. <laughs> he's computer. on wallpaper engine. That's <laughs> what Steam just room. said, yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Uh, shoot, I was thinking about something. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Charles Woodson getting to... The Hall of Fame, right? Absolutely. That's pretty That's, cool. It's exciting. I always loved watching Woodson play. Is it an actual hall? Yes, in Canton, yeah. Ohio. Do they just like... Fame. Keep building it longer? Fame. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Just do story it's just a fucking tunnel. Does it go <laughs> underground? <laughs> I think it's a building more than it is a hall, dude. Donda. Donda. Who listened to Donda? I like how we were complaining about Kanye and it drops less than 12 hours later because it was at like 5 in the morning that it came out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, funny. Have you listened to it? Yeah. Yeah, I have. It's it's uh, it's different. Dude, it's, it's an album of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, I think it's good. I just don't think it's God tier Like, because I love the life of Pablo too much to call it God tier But I will say it is good. It's just... Some of the songs could be cut out. Like, a lot of the songs have part twos at the end of the album. And if you cut all of those out and just mash them with the earlier versions, I think it would be a much better album. Yeah. Because it's, 20, it's 27 songs long. Yeah, that's a little much. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot of yay. I know God breathed on me. easy. Yeah. Dude, Kanye. And then... He's really lost his mind now. I, I love that as soon as Kanye comes out with his album, too, then Drake announces his album. Yeah. Because Drake had an album, but he didn't want to announce it because he knew Kanye was probably going to throw it on the same day as him. So, <laughs> yeah. and then that's funny. Drake's album called Certified Lover Boy. Yeah, <laughs> real impressive. Certified, Certified Lover Boy, CBL or CLB. Um, it's got a ridiculous album cover. If you haven't seen it, he hired an artist. That's uh, the way I've heard it described. I can't remember who described it. I think it was critical. He described it as the dude that the, the, uh, he commissioned for it just loves robbing rich people of their money by coming up with some just like, oh, this is really deep art when it probably took him like 10 minutes late. It's a bunch of pregnant emojis on the album cover. If you go and you listen to it on Spotify, the album cover is animated. Yeah, it's really... And they're all just sitting there rubbing their bellies, staring at the screen, just... Yeah. It's awkward as hell. Yeah, I don't know what... <laughs> what he was going after there uh drake's album suffers from the same thing there's a lot of good cuts on it but some songs on it just you need to throw those away because his album's an hour like 24 minutes so it's also a stupid long album that has no reason being stupid long yeah why because uh it's i think it's what scorpion suffered from because i remember when scorpion came out that was supposed to be his magnum opus and it was like a half rap half r&b album like, the first half of it was R&B, and the second half was the hip-hop portion, where he was actually rapping and spitting bars and shit. Uh, no, I just... There was too many songs on it. 
Yeah. I'm not saying he's a gold digger. And I'm a knee. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kanye had the better album, but I also respect what Drake put out. So, I don't know. There was that song with uh, Travis Scott. I forgot what the name of it is, but uh, with Drake, and it, it was a good. It was a good song. Yeah, it's a banger. It went to my playlist. I still think Injury I Reserves guess. album in two weeks is going to be way better than both of those. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to say it's not a posthumous release, but one of the band members did die, so it's going to be the first one without him. Mark my words, Injury Reserves album is going to be better. Talk to me in two weeks. All right. Tune in two episodes from now. Brandon's playing with his mic, and it's uh. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, nobody can see it. <laughs> 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 Just thump. Hell yeah, man. Jordan, you went and saw a concert recently. Who'd you go see? Fucking Green Day, Fall Out Boy, and Weezer. <gasps> Fuck yeah, were they awesome? <laughs> yeah. Green yeah. Day's amazing, it was, right? It was like a, it was like a, probably greatest hits kind of set, set list. Basically. Who was sure. the headliner? Yeah. Or was it more of a co-tour? It was, it, it was attempted more as a co-tour, but you could kind of tell it was Green Day at the top of it because yeah. it's fucking Green Day. Green Day steals the show. Yeah, really for did. sure. They're, they're incredible. He really did too. I mean, everybody. Is going to go for Green Day. I mean, my favorite they is always, probably Weezer. <laughs> for sure. Like, Green Day always gets political in their show, but this, the connection that he puts up with the crowd is so fucking good. Well, I saw them in Vegas a few years ago. I don't know if you've listened to that newer band, no. uh, Interrupters. They were the opener. I thought you were going to say Green Day's newer album. I was going to say, no, actually, I haven't. No, they played a couple songs for me. Some, good some good that they only played a couple. Like I said, it's, it was like a greatest hits album for each of those bands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it had a little bit of everything yeah Green Day. new old each band. i saw them when they released revolution radio and that was a dope ass fucking show well, you know my girl sophie she was really excited because uh fallout boy they played a song that they don't normally play from like foley and our, la- she, our lawyers like made us change the name of the yeah, song foley had to <laughs> well whichever one it was i don't remember which one she was saying that's they cool. played it that's good though yeah. um yeah because like when people talk about fallout boy nobody ever talks about foley like period well, and you know how, like, you look up a set list, and it's not necessarily going to be that list. You know, maybe they'll, like, drop 30% of the songs or the, something. The Weezer play, any, everything. The Weezer play everything. any songs off of Ratitude? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah, I was like, that, that's another album that people forget about. Look, I don't remember what's on Ratitude is the yeah. problem. Um, I only, I asked him because I sent him a couple of Weezer memes, and he was like, yeah, they were good. And I went, oh, shit, that's right, you went. And I took a picture. He's got a, I got the picture of it uh, with the uh, Green Day uh, American Idiot Fist. He uh-huh. got, it's a foam finger. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, badass. The, the grenade. But uh, yeah, I think it's in my car actually. What souvenir? What souvenir? <laughs> what souvenir did you get, Brandon, when you went and saw them? I got um, <clears throat> I didn't get the vinyl record. I might have bought the vinyl record at the show. I don't remember where I got my Revrad. That's dope. I love that. <laughs> I might have gotten my Revrad vinyl there, but I might have got somewhere else. But I got a flag with the burning stereo on it, and then we got a poster that had like all the tour things on it had the band in their fucking masks from the uh, bang bang video where they had yep. like the fake rubber masks on they bang had bang. Those, they had them on there in the show too it was kind of cool i know it's on the posters yeah, that they, i've seen they had fucking one opener they had one opener band they played for about an hour and then there was about a half an hour break in between it and then the drunk bunny dude came out hyped up the crowd and did the ramon song and then they played both. No, they did Bohemian Rhapsody first. Did they play Bohemian Rhapsody over the PA? When yeah. Green Day? Yep. Oh, Ev- every show. They play Bohemian Rhapsody and then the Drunk Bunny comes out. They started the opening, Drunk Bunny comes out. And yeah. then I think they started to do. Or it looked like they were going to do a cover of it on the set list, but no. Uh, I'll give yeah. Billy Joe credit for one thing. He's always kept the same energy. I feel oh. like throughout. No matter the 90s. what their music's come out with, he knows how to fucking make a show. It didn't memorable. really feel like he came out from like 2003. His career. No, straight up. Like, like he walked on stage from 2003. Well, think about that. His career has now spanned four decades. Five if you include the, the small portion of the 80s him and, when they were doing Him and Mike made wrinkles, Green man. Day in 89. Like the yeah. band's been around so for five a decades. long time. Yeah. And so he's always kept that same energy. They made him and Mike made Green Day out of high school. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> it was their high school they fucking have a garage trumpet player band. like Papa Roach. Well, no, uh, <laughs> I, on this tour, Hello Mega, they're doing. I'm seeing. I guess every stop, they pull up a girl to play guitar from the audience. Yeah, and then huh. give her a free guitar at the end of it. Yeah, at the, the tour that I saw, they they did the same thing. They pulled up. There, there was a kid. Like yeah. us, usually, it was a little kid that they pulled up on stage. Then and they're they shooting for the youngest person in the, the front mm-hmm. row. Or yeah, whatever. and then they had him come up on stage, and then they. 
they had so many fucking people. I noticed the um, Billy always plays Gibsons, yeah. Gibson guitars. But whenever they came up on stage, the guitar that he came out with was an Epiphone, and then he handed that guitar to the kid to play, huh. and then was like, "You can take it." And I was like, "You sly dogs! You're just not ha- <laughs> you're just not handing away <laughs> yeah. five grand a show." <laughs> exactly. Her manager was like, "Hey, stop doing that," because he probably did. The first few shows, like, he probably handed out a real nice fu- fucking guitars, and the label's like, he "Stop handing gu- those guitars out." He plays. If you play Gibson Les Pauls, you know what the fuck you're playing. Like, they're the guitar. That's why I don't oh, buy yeah. one. You know, back in the early days, wall. they were, you know, huge. You know, they were front and center. And they're I the fucking... They had the money to do that. Yeah. I want to get a big Gretsch, like, one of these days. Gretches are cool. Mm-hmm. Those semi-hollow bodies are fucking awesome. Because mm-hmm. you can plug it in, it sounds awesome. But if you don't have an amp, fuck, it's basically an acoustic electric guitar. Exactly, exactly. Motherfuckers, is dope. <laughs> Geeter. Geeter? Gators. We play the Gator. Clean it. Shoot him. Shoot him. It's a Gator. Shoot him. Don't get the gumbo. Get the Gator. Shoot him. We 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 gonna, we're gonna, get, we're gonna get them Gators. <laughs> Shout out to all our listeners out in the bayou. <laughs> okay. At the moment, zero. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one of those random viewers is some dude out in the shed in the bayou. That'd be cool. Using the internet for the first time, and that's what YouTube gave him. <laughs> yeah. Making yeah. fun of our Zatrioni's jambalaya. I use the box. It's easier. He's still... He listened to the first episode. And he's still writing his first and first comment on it that hasn't been posted. It's going to literally be a novel. Those <laughs> random three dudes in the Netherlands or something. <laughs> oi, oi, boy. I love the... Cop. Oh, it's Friday. It's a cop. Bro's podcast is out. Sweet. <laughs> Sweden. <laughs> Netherlands? Yeah, I think you get beat up if you confuse it too. Same thing. Well, Swedes will just fucking kill you. Well... The Finns just... They're just like that. The Finns are there. I, sw- I mix up Sweden and Switzerland, even though they're, like, nowhere near each other, just because of the name. <laughs> they were both neutral, I think, right? Yes, they are. Switzerland. Switzerland is the one that's, like, impossible to invade, because it's basically... Switzerland. The bowl country yeah. in the mountains, and every person, once they turn 18, has to be in the military. And they're all super, wow. like... Into, yeah. Once like you turn 18 there, pro-national. you have to spend like a year or something in the military just to have the training. So if ever the country's invaded, literally, it's basically the idea of America is just an armed populace. But you actually, it's imagine if every single person in America over the age of 18 spent a year in the army. It's the one country yeah. on earth where there are more guns per capita than people. Yeah. And on top of that, they all have like this contingency plan, and part of which That's is go, they combo. blow every bridge that enters the country, every road, every train bridge, everything. So the only it's way in is by to the air. Explode if they want to, so that there's no way in or out, and they are isolated and autonomous. You, th- you can only get in by the air, or you have to shit, fucking dude. get in by <laughs> <laughs> fucking climbing a mountain. And they know those mountains better than you, so they're going to notice you climbing a battalion Dude, of people Swiss over bank mountains. Account. Do they have? Swiss do you think there's they have an itchy, like yeah. itchy trigger finger? And one day, like, there's an earthquake, and everybody starts freaking out. And they go, Argh! and they hit the button. Everybody trusts the bank in Switzerland because it's the most secure bank on it. No one's going to fuck with Switzerland. They're yeah. a small country, but they're basically Sweet. impossible to invade. Yeah. Yeah. They're in the most ideal spot. That's pretty nuts, dude. The just air is the only <laughs> real advantage you could ever get over. Like, Seriously. a country with high air superiority could probably overpower them. Space weaponry or something in the future, maybe. Even, even just pl- what America's planes and jets up. Uh, even I, Russia, I, China. Nukes. Like, nukes is the only option, and that's you wouldn't even you need nukes, populace, too. Which is like, you, could just, you could just drop a couple, literally two Moabs on the country. That's, fair, that's, a, like, that's a large enough the, explosive. The, the, okay. death, the civilian death. We're not saying uh, this is actually going to happen. Yeah, this, this, is yeah, a this, disclaimer. Is, this is this all is hypothetical. Not, well, no, Twitter. it's not even hypothetical. It's We're hypothetical of Switzerland's power. Shout out to my boys watching this live in 2022. We were playing and we got sidetracked. Yeah. But that's what I would Shit's say. Shit's going down. Oh, uh, cities. Planets on fire. Cities uh, with a mortar Skywalker. launcher. <laughs> but, that could be its own, but that could be its own sentence. That couldn't be related to what I was saying. Have you ever Representative seen that? Representative from California. There's a, yeah. there's a white... <laughs> 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 There's a whitest kids you know sketch where yeah. he gets on the mic, like he's sitting in front of the camera and stuff like that. And you notice he's the only one in the sketch because he's probably the only one brave enough to do it. And he's all like, "Hey, you know, there's an illegal free- phrase to say in America, and it's I want to the president of the United States of America, but I can say it because I'm just demonstrating it. I don't actually mean it. <laughs> but if I were, I would just say that. And he keeps going on, and then he goes, you know, if I said that, maybe something like with a mortar launcher, 
because that might not be related to what I was saying earlier. <laughs> and then he's all like, he starts describing a plan on how to do it, but he's all like, that, totally legal, totally legal. And he's like, what's even crazier is if you show diagrams. And then for like a half second on the screen, he flashed a diagram before he's talking. <laughs> And if you, it's like funny. two minutes, and I it's, bet it's it a really like, funny sketch. It had to be bullshit enough of a plan to where they were like, okay, it wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. But, uh, yeah, rest in peace, Trevor Moore. Oh, He's Jesus. Br- brilliant soul. Genius. So, president. anyway. Something about the president. The president. He's a oh, cool. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> there's been 46 of them, apparently. <laughs> That's a few. I thought we were higher than that. No. No, 46. So. Well, I'm 46? Higher, We've had 46 presidents. Yeah, I'm definitely higher than that. Does Garfield count as two? Because Garfield served four years, lost the election, but he won again four years later. Please don't just say Garfield. President Garfield. <laughs> Did he like the lasagna? I don't know. I don't know what's up with him. I don't remember if he counted as two different presidents. I think he counted as the same. I think so, too, yeah. Yeah, that would have just con- counted as a... Because his name was already like on the, the list. That has they the didn't want to write his, nis- li- his name twice. Yeah, this dickhead doesn't deserve two. Fuck you, non-consecutive. Uh, oh, I think God. he's the only president to serve two terms that were non-consecutive. Yeah. So. And I'm like 99% sure it was Garfield. And the only reason I remember that is because it's President Garfield. Wait, who was the one that was shot? It was Lincoln there, and there's Kennedy, a and lot of them that have been shot. Yeah. Well, there's been three that were assassinated, actually. Lincoln, Kennedy, and then there's one Lincoln, more. Lincoln, Reagan was shot, but he didn't die. Yeah. There was one uh, more that actually what, died. Was it uh, McKinley? Uh, was it McKin- I thought it was Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, I think it starts with a K. I keep wanting to say McKinley, but that's not right. Assassinated. Just assassinated presidents. You can help by expanding this list. Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> Kennedy, Lincoln, uh, McKinley. It was McKinley. I don't know why I remembered McKinley. They tried to assassinate Jackson. They tried to assassinate uh, Reagan. Mm-hmm. They tried. There's a even lot a of list. There's even a list of uh, wounded presidents, like Theodore. Three and a half years after he left office, Teddy Roosevelt ran again in the 1912 presidential election as a member of the Progressive Party. Uh, while campaigning in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, John Fleming Schrank, a saloon keeper from New York who had been stalking him for weeks, shot Roosevelt once in the chest with a 38 caliber Colt Police Positive Special. Damn. Wow. Well, the 50-page text of his campaign speech titled Progressive Cause Greater Than Any Individual folded over twice in Roosevelt's breast pocket and a metal glasses case showed the bullet saving his life. Yeah, he got, like, super lucky because this super dude lucky. tried to shoot him and then he... Took the bullet. It didn't like no, go it's in. Theodore Roosevelt. And he was like, "I'm fine." Yeah. So he goes up on stage and gives the fucking speech. Theodore Roosevelt hour. was a fucking badass. And then like that motherfucker gave zero shits mm-hmm. about. Just keep in anything. mind, it's still impact pressure, so he's got like bruising and possibly broken bones. And he it's like gave the getting shot with a bulletproof vest. It still, it still hurts, but it doesn't go through. You. March thirtieth, yeah, but like he needed to go to the hospital like afterwards. Yeah. Was like, Theodore oh Roosevelt a uh, switch? Maybe. He said he was the guy that said, "Walk lightly, but carry a big stick." Yeah, Speak I know. Softly. I'm Stats, just thinking yeah. about absolute units, and he, he was played by know. Robin Williams oh, yeah, in no, Night at the Museum. He yeah. became yeah. another absolute McKinley fucking unit. Shot. He's like, probably my he was, favorite president. He was McKinley's vice president. McKinley got assassinated, and then he was put mm-hmm. up into office after that. My favorite president, mm-hmm. dead ass. Theodore my Roosevelt was off, awesome. and the fact that he loved nature so much too, and put all those a lot of fucking like. Restrictions on logging companies yeah, in the he U.S. Had, when he did, imagine what oh, it would have been a, would look like. it would be a barren fucking wasteland. There'd be no national we parks would be anywhere, like colonized like any other European country. My favorite. national parks would all be deserts. Yeah, like, we, it would look mm-hmm. like the rest of the world. Without Teddy Roosevelt, he was like, "Hey, you cut down a tree, you fucking plant two more." Yeah, like over if you go up off of I eighty, like if you're in the California, that patch of fucking trees that got burnt down years and years and years ago, those trees are fucking big now. Yeah. Like it's yeah, they like are. the progress that's going back into replanting those trees, like it fucking makes a difference. Well, over the years. That hillside's looking really alive now. Yeah. My favorite president well, is James Tyler Polk because Polk. Ned's declassified <laughs> Ned's declassified middle school survival guide. Their school was James Polk Middle School. <laughs> Don't know why they chose that as a name. They just I guess picked a random president. Polk is usually a throwaway like middle school name. It is. Yeah, shout out to you on the thumbnails, Cyrus. You've been doing an awesome fucking I'm job. I'm trying my best. <laughs> Dude, Bonk. you're you're doing good. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thumbnails really make the videos pop, and I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Go us. 
Hell yeah. Woo! Hey, dog. Yeah, sub- subscribe to our podcast. I'm looking We're on yeah. YouTube. If you've made it this far, why don't you hit that like button? Carson a Strong bell. threw a 43-yard touchdown. We're now only down four to the Bears. <laughs> four to wow. the Bears. <laughs> Nevada's playing California, so. <laughs> nice. That actually <laughs> fucking startled me. I yeah, watched sorry. it fall, and I went. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we were losing 14-0 at the end of the first quarter, and we've answered back with 10 in a row, so. I like when our home team does good. Mm-hmm. They usually if do they pretty good win, in basketball. Shame. I can't wait to go to a few games in basketball. Me too. I'm excited. One of these days. Yeah. I went to some during their 2018 season when they went to the March Madness and they were supposed to be the best team ever, and they turns out they weren't. With the Twins? Mm-hmm. It was yeah. their last year, and yeah. I remember it was a big deal because the year before we made it to the Sweet 16, I think. Yep. Yeah, and it was – like, whoa, Nevada's in the Sweet 16? This is awesome. And then we ended yeah. up losing to Loyola because Loyola was having their own Cinderella story. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because they made it to the Final Four. Loyola, did they make it to the Final Four again last year? Or what happened to Loyola? But basically, Loyola did it again this March Madness where they made it a super deep run. Really? Mm-hmm. Fuck. Because I remember Baylor played Gonzaga in the finals. and I remember Baylor. Gonzaga was the school to beat because they were undefeated. It was the first time a team oh, that yeah. went undefeated in like 40 years. And then they lost the championship game to Baylor. Baylor wanted it more. It is really sad to see a whole team lose their feet. Where'd our coach go? Uh, I can't remember his name. Who? Uh, coach of the basketball team back when the Twins were still playing. Did he leave? Yeah, right after their, those guys graduated. I'm forgetting the name. I don't remember his name brothers. either. I know the football team's still coached by Jay. Something. It's the same. It's been the same guy for so long. I want to say Jay Norvell. But, um, yeah, I didn't know he left the school. Because I know both the Martin twins now are, uh, they're playing for Charlotte. Because, uh, I think it was Cody was drafted and Caleb was, uh, signed as an undrafted rookie. Yeah, Eric Musselman. Mm hmm. He moved to Arizona State. Really? Is that in Arizona? Yeah. Yeah, he was... He he was the head coach, right? Yeah. Head coach for Nevada 2014 through 19. Mm. That's that's who I was thinking about. Fair, okay. Um, I'm looking at the t- tournament bracket right now because I'm trying to figure out where Loyola Chicago is. I remember when Oral Roberts beat Ohio State. That was crazy. Number 15, Oral Roberts beat number two ranked Ohio State. Yeah, that was a wild year of basketball. Yeah, and then Oral Roberts went on to beat Florida, and they made it to the uh, Sweet 16. Fucking Oral Roberts. And I remember laughing at them because I'm like, (laughs) your name's Oral Roberts. But crazy, man. I don't know. Some crazy shit's happened. I love it when dumb stuff happens in the March Madness tournament, like when Abilene Christian beat Texas. Who the hell is Abilene Christian? Yeah, uh, the twins, I'm sorry to interrupt you again, Cyrus, mm-hmm. but the twins that played, Caleb and Cody Martin. Yep. And they uh, they went on to the same professional team, didn't they? Yeah, they're both on Charlotte. Charlotte Hornets. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. I don't think Cody gets a lot of playing time, but... Yeah, well, you know, when you're playing with a family member, mm-hmm. one's going to be a little better. It happened with Eli and... Uh, <laughs> you made fun of my forehead when we were kids, but now look at me, Eli. Chicken <laughs> parm, you take <laughs> them. <laughs> How many commercials do you have, Eli? <laughs> no, that's right. Sorry. You'll get one one day, sport. Uh, you know what's funny, though, is that Eli won two, two rings before May, May, uh, Peyton did. Did he really? Yeah, because he beat. So Peyton won his first one when the Colts beat the Bears in 2006, and uh-huh. then the next year. Um, in 2007, the Giants beat the Patriots, and Eli got his first ring. And then Peyton lost to the Saints in 2009, and then in 2011, the Giants won, and they beat the Patriots, which gave Jesus Eli two. Christ and then Pitt- Manning lost another one when they lost to the Seahawks when he was on the Broncos, and then finally took that one against the Panthers. Is this in your notes? No, I just know that. <laughs> 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 like, in- Jesus Christ, man. Ugh. Do you know the two teams that Derek Carr has never lost to? No, wait. Hold on. Never three lost. Teams. Three teams. Never lost. Derek Carr has never lost to three teams. Okay, the, hold on. The My guess is the Bengals, the Jags, and the Browns. 
No, I vividly remember all those guys beating us. Well, never mind. No but way. Browns beat us in 2014. Oh, my God. That's right. Mm-hmm. Those, okay. Those, it, those, it was, those, it was those, his those, rookie year. But those are just yeah. the three shittiest teams I could think of. Yep. So we, we've beat the Browns the last two times we've played them, but we lost the to them. Jags beat them? Miami. Beat them. Bucks. Mm-hmm. No, we lost to Miami last year. Remember the, fit, <laughs> the, the face <laughs> mask call? Yeah. yeah. God. Bucks? No, we've. No, we've... we lost to them last season with Tom Brady. <laughs> That's right, because Brady was playing. God, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah we've, I'm we've... trying so hard. Derek Carr is undefeated against three teams and three teams only. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if I'm leaving another one out. Okay, because I'm still trying to narrow it down in my head. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard one. It is. I know it's a hard one. Tennessee, Tennessee. Uh, no, we've lost to Tennessee. Damn. We uh, okay. 2019. Lions. Wow. <laughs> the Lions. No, we lost them in 2015. Wow. Yeah. That's all the shitty teams like out the door. Mm-hmm. That's like all I can think of. Okay, Eagles. Eagles. No, we've Falcons. Lo- he's lost to the Eagles once. Falcons. We've lost them twice. Ah! Derek, Derek Carr's never De- beat the Falcons Denver? or the Eagles. No, we've, we've gotten whooped by Denver. Yeah. I'm just Pey- naming when, when Peyton Manning point. was on the Broncos. Yeah, I'm we just got naming whooped. teams now. Um, um, for some reason, I thought Alaska had a team. So <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously <laughs> thinking about it. I think the three teams I'm thinking of are the only three teams he's undefeated against. Wow! And it's just Derek Carr, right? This is wild. Just Derek okay. Carr, yeah. Chargers? No. Ooh. Oh wow! We've lost, no. we've lost the Chargers. I'm gonna get a full list of NFL teams. Y'all Bro. beating the Niners. Before. Jets. Okay, so we, no, the Jets often no. beat our ass. Derek Carr's rookie season, we lost to the Jets. Yeah, I remember Not just the hating fair. the Jets oh, no. and losing to them. Twenty nineteen, we got whooped by the Jets. Remember? Yep. It was th- it was like thirty four three. It was so a fucking recently. ass whooping. Yeah. It was it was um, literally an ass whooping. The Jets were terrible, and we got our asses whooped. To think it's not the teams. Steelers. No. No, he's one and one against the Steelers. Fucking <laughs> dude, I can't believe you're just rolling this shit off your head for yeah. one. The only the only records I'm not sure of with Derek Carr is his records against division rivals because we've played so many games. The only one I know for a hundred percent is his record against the Chiefs is two and twelve. Two and twelve? Wow. Oh dude, this nope. man's three three and eleven, sorry. Three and eleven. He's won three. He won okay. his very first career win uh. was against the Chiefs, then we beat them in twenty seventeen and then we just beat him last year. Okay, okay. Uh Okay. <laughs> the Texans? That's what I was gonna guess. No, they beat us in 2019. Wow. Okay, so, and it's not Dallas. And they beat yeah, us the in Cowboys that had to have, because they're just the Cowboys. They the do Cowgirls. Their own thing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Politically correct. It's <laughs> a shitty team, I know. Uh, Vikes? Yeah, the Vikings. Come on. It has to be the Vikings. Uh, no, At least one of them. If it doesn't roll no. off his head, then oh, no. Oh, we're 0 we're 2 against the Vikings. Are we really? We lost them in 2015, and then they gave us an ass whooping in 2019. I just completely. F- we're trying to guess. And who it, have, you've okay, never the lost Ravens. To. No, we lost the them in 2018. Ravens had to have beat. It was one of Lamar Jackson's first starts, God. but we beat them a couple years before Holy that. Like in, shit! I think in 2015 we beat them. We beat them in 2016, but we lost to them in 17 and 18. And the miserable life of a Raiders fan. You're just sitting here figuring out all the teams that we've Title? lost to. Bills. <laughs> The Bills? Yeah. yeah. That's the last one I got is Bills. We lost to them in 2019. <laughs> Fuck Shit. the Seahawks. Did he, did he win against the Seahawks? At this time, you're just naming teams. Uh, oh and 2 At this point. Oh and 2 versus Seahawks. He has a preseason win against the Seahawks. That was how we got the starting job. But that's not a okay. real one. The Colts. No, we got we got what by them last year. <laughs> Dude, after the Vikings after the Vikings was wrong, I was like, holy shit. There's yeah. three teams he's undefeated against. One of them is like, okay, one of them's Really? And the other one is, well, we've only played them once. Okay, who have we only played once? Because I'm never going to get Giants. That. The Giants. He's 1-0 against the Giants. And that was because, okay. if you don't remember, <sighs> that was the game that Ben McAdoo benched Eli Manning for no fucking reason. <laughs> what? No fucking reason. He benched him for a week, broke his Iron Man streak, because Eli Manning was the closest to Brett Favre's record, benched him for a week. <gasps> What? Broke his streak, and Eli Manning started the next week because he realized how bad he messed up. By yeah, because we whooped the Giants that game. It was it wasn't even close. And I remember Giants fans thanking us because Ben McAdoo was fired after that Sorry. game. Just fidgeting. With so the Giants fighting. are one of those teams. It's because we've only played them once, but we're one, Derek Carr is one and zero against the Giants. That's All right, wild. who are the other two teams? The Cardinals. Okay. No. We haven't guessed the Cardinals yet. No, yeah. he lost to them rookie year. Uh. We named off that. I don't want to look up the teams. I just want to try to remember them. 
Okay. Because we've guessed so we many. Them. This is a fun game. Yeah. yeah so no just start shit. thinking of teams that you haven't thought of yet. I'll give you okay. a hint, Jordan. They're on that screen right there. <laughs> it's actually one of these? <laughs> yeah. It's two of those guys. Did we say Falcons? We already guessed the Falcons. All right, Falcons. Yeah. Oh, and two. Uh, or, yeah, oh, and two. So lost in 2016, their Super Bowl year, and then they handed us the, our only ass whooping last year. It's not fucking, the fucking 43 Saints, to six. We already What's guessed the Saints. the Saints. Packers? No. Saints. We already guessed Der- the Packers. Derek Carr is 2 Did we guess the Packers? Saints. Derek Carr is 2-0 and against the Saints? Yep. What the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> so the, Drew's, the Drew Brees Saints, nonetheless, right? Yeah. The Drew Brees Saints. We beat wow. The, he beat the Drew Brees Saints 2-0. Oh. Now that, 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 now that Brees career. is retired, Carr is 2-0 and against Brees. That's we'll, badass. We'll uh, which one did you say, Brandon? He, the Packers is what he guessed. No, 0-2. Oh <laughs> yeah. Well, I ran through like three rapid fire. <laughs> he did. Okay, one more team. It's an NFC team. NFC. Mm-hmm. We were just talking about him earlier. Khalil Mack got it. <coughs> I'll give you a hint. It was Khalil Mack, the game that he got the pick against um, uh, oh. the quarterback oh. when he ran it back in. It, oh. it throw back to if you remember the quarterback. Gosh. It was the we two-yard pick, and he jumped into the crowd. We beat them Hold in on, 2016, and we beat them. Yeah, show me the picture. Okay. We beat them in 2016, and we that. beat them in week one last year. If you remember week one last year. Derek Carr is also 2-0 against that team. We've guessed all these teams. That's my thing, yeah. yeah. Like, no, you we, missed one. Washington. The Panthers? The Panthers. There it the is. Panthers. Yeah, it the Panthers. It was the Panthers. It was okay. the Panthers. <laughs> it was the Cam That's Newton was, Panthers. I kept, I kept Panthers. thinking there was another cat one, but I kept thinking of the <laughs> yeah. fucking Jaguars. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about the Panthers. Yeah, yeah after we yeah, said Yeah, Cam Jag. was on the Panthers. Yeah. Because Jag was one of the first teams we said. Derek Carr was undefeated against the Jags, but then in, I think it was 20, yeah, 2019, it was our final game in Oakland. We were up 15 to 6, and we lost wow. in the fourth quarter. We were up like nine points with five minutes left, and we lost that game. I'll never forget it because it was painful. Final game in Oakland, they got booed <laughs> out of the stadium because they just they. What are they doing? The final game in Oakland. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just remember watching that game. Well, not even watching it. I just remember how I felt at the end of it. You know, disappointed. It was awful. It, it was, was just like it was oh, one of the God. worst feelings as a Raiders fan because we were tied with the Titans the week before at twenty-one twenty-one, and then we blew the game and we lost forty-two to twenty-one. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, we have everything to play for. The Jags are in a downward spiral. It's our last game in Oakland. Surely we'll win. And we were winning the whole game up until the final couple of minutes where we just we said, here, you can have it. Yeah, that's exactly what happened, too. Just mm-hmm. as, And it, it, it seemed like it was just like shitting on Oakland one more time before they yeah. left kind of thing. Do you know what Tom Brady's record is versus the Falcons? No. 11-0. and 0. <laughs> That includes every time he played them when he was on the Patriots. That included the Super Bowl. And that includes the two games last year because he's now in the same division as the Falcons. Wow. Do you know what Tom Brady's record is versus the Buffalo Bills? Probably worse than what you just said, right? Yeah. You ready? 32-3. and three. Tom Brady is 32-3 and three against the Buffalo Bills. That's why, because the Bucks made it to the Super Bowl last year. Do you remember last year it was the Bills and the Chiefs in the AFC Championship? Everyone said it would have been some fucking curse that Tom Brady leaves the division the Bills make to the Super Bowl, and they have to play Tom Brady. Jeez. Wow. Tom Brady is 32-3 and three against the Bills. And that included, I think, like a there was like a stretch where they won 16 in a row or something like that. God damn. Yeah. Brady hates the Bills. <laughs> I think the Bills hate Brady. I don't think Brady even thinks about the Bills. He's just like, oh, we're playing the Bills. I, I, thirty-two cool. and three. We're we playing next week. Let's focus on so that. So think about that. Brady faced the Bills twice every year since he every year he was on the Patriots. Wow. So if you include that, that's um, that's what nineteen seasons starting or something like that. Eighteen. So that's thirty-six games. Thirty-two and three covers all but a few of them. Maybe it was nineteen years as a starter, because he was suspended. He got hurt that one season. Jesus. Imagine Bills fans. I thought being a Raiders fans was, fan was hard, but we imagine never, if we had to fucking consistently play the Patriots. Well, I, yeah, that's why everyone's like when Brady left, the the East was wide open, and that's why the, the Dolphins barely missed the playoffs last year. The Bills yeah. made it to the AFC Championship game. That's why I like being a Niners fan because it goes like really, 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 really mm-hmm. good. We make it to the Super Bowl, and then we just suck for a few years, and then we fucking climb back up, and then we make it again, and then we lose again but go to the we're gonna get number first. six here soon <laughs> <laughs> not this year probably but hopefully another the seven years <laughs> hell yeah dude that was a lot of football trivia for no reason Fucking it's fun football. you know it's it's a good distraction right yeah sunday game monday game thursday night game who drafted it's just bojack's a number one overall bojack horseman's playing now <laughs> bojack horseman 
Bo Jack Horseman. Yeah. Who, Let's go back to that. Anyways. Bo Jackson. Who, dra- who drafted show. him number one overall? Wait. What? Who drafted Bo Jackson number one overall? Which NFL team? The, mm. the Patriots, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. Ah. But they duped him. Basically, what they did is they brought him to a facility tour and told him it wouldn't mess with his NCAA eligibility. It did, and he was kicked off of his college's baseball team. Wow. Because what the Buccaneers tried to do is they were trying to get him out of baseball because they wanted him to come play for the Bucks. Yeah. So what they did is they, they knew that they would make him ineligible if they brought him into the team facility, hoping that his baseball career was over and that he would just have to come to the, come to the Bucks by default because they wanted him to play with them. He said he'll never play for the Bucks. He was drafted wow. first overall by the Buccaneers, never went to Tampa Bay. He said, I refuse to play for them. And he went and had a successful baseball career with the Royals. They were like, hey, remember how you said you don't want to play for us? Mm-hmm. Well, you're playing for us. And he went, no, I'm not. fucking hell I am, and grabbed his baseball bat. So the Bucks pretty much wasted the first overall pick on somebody that never showed up to the team. That's facility. amazing. Never well, yeah. made a flat. Yeah. Just, he was like, I'm never playing for them. And he never did. It wasn't until like a year or two later, Al Davis called him up and said, we want you to play for the Raiders. And he said, no, my baseball career is important. He said, no, when the baseball season's over, you can come to Oakland and you'll play for the Raiders. So the agreement was was whenever the baseball season ended, then he would come and play for the Raiders. Wow. That's why Bo Jackson had, like, if you look at his career stats, he never had the best stats. And that was yeah. because he was only playing half a season. Hmm. Shout out to him, though, for fucking playing in two professional leagues like that. And, and it, standing shit. his ground, too. He was yeah. baller at both of them. Like, you look yeah. at Michael Jordan, he wasn't that good at baseball. No, Bo Jackson killed it in baseball, and he was killing it in football. Yeah. That's crazy, though. Yeah. That's Those badass. are both tough sports, too, at the professional league. Mm-hmm. Like, they're fucking Very intense. involved. To be able like, to play baseball and then the motherfuckers season ends and then one week ball later you're in Oakland. Ni- a ball the size of your fist at 90 miles an hour mm-hmm. and less than a foot away from your dick. Sorry, you the Raiders were in L.A. at the time. Like, professional yeah. Yeah. baseball yeah, so what, fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. But, so what was the time frame of this, Cyrus? Like, how long did he do it for? Yeah, well, like, like so what, I, when uh, was he playing? In the 90s, right? So he played from, I think the draft was 87, but he played baseball for a few years and then stepped into uh, football like from like 88 or 89 into the early 90s. And then he got hurt in a game with the Raiders, and that was when his football career ended because he couldn't sustain hits like that anymore. So yeah. he went back to uh, baseball. Oh, fucking A. That's rad. Yeah, so his career was kind of ended short in the NFL, but he went on to have a successful baseball career. I would, yeah. I would say it's successful. For sure, my life drink. So now that we're on the football tangent, can I talk about the whole Bishop Sycamore scandal? Oh yeah. Have you guys have you guys heard? I've seen memes of it everywhere. I've heard people talking smack because Cam Newton was cut by the Patriots this yeah. week. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Everyone says he's gonna go sign and play with Bishop Sycamore. I like a joke <laughs> and shit like that. Have any of you heard about what's going on with Bishop Sycamore? What the fuck is Bishop Sycamore? Yeah, they are a high school. <sighs> High school with quotes around it based out of Columbus, Ohio, with more quotations around it. Um, I'm just going to go down the list in the order that I wrote it in. This entire page is filled with information about Bishop Sycamore. (laughs) It is the – I mean, like, reading it, watching videos on it, because, like, I read about it when it happened earlier in the week. And then one of my favorite YouTubers, Urinating Tree, came out with a video talking (laughs) about the whole scandal. (laughs) And – he was flabbergasted so i went and i read some of it and i have some of the points that he made and some stuff that i found and i was clicking on all the references in the wikipedia because i'm sitting there trying to read all of it because i'm like everything about this is fucking crazy all right so bishop sycamore basically they're a football team they're the centurions they're based out of columbus ohio yeah they have their school they basically say we have a bunch of division one recruits that are going to go into college football the next year we want top teams in the nation to play our school because we have the top players in the nation as well um so this last sunday so six days ago the espn was doing their high school football kickoff series which features players that are going to go on and play for top colleges and shit like that um what happened was is there was a school called img academy the problem with img academy is they are known as the best school in the country like basically the best football players in the country play for img academy and nobody likes playing them because img academy just mops everybody <laughs> because they have the wow. best high schoolers in the country they go and they give them a good education they send them off to a college somewhere and chances are they might make it into the nfl someday if not they'll be super successful at whatever college they decide to go play for out of so espn they were looking they were like well we want 
to put IMG Academy on our final kickoff series of the year on ESPN. Out of the 200 schools that IMG Academy listed that they wanted to play, so like basically they just picked the top 200 teams in the country, the only team to accept the invite (laughs) was Bishop Sycamore, right? So people are like, Bishop Sycamore, wow, these guys must be really talented to play these guys IMG Academy, right? So the day the game rolls around, and basically they lose 58 to 0. They got mopped. And it wasn't even close the entire time. But throughout the course of the game, people started noticing things about Bishop Sycamore. There was the first thing, which is they weren't good. They weren't good at all because they they didn't look like a team. They looked like they'd never played football before. They just didn't look like they were practicing because they they just looked completely outclassed by IMG Academy, especially from a school that claims that they have as good of players as IMG Academy. They couldn't. They 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 got. They didn't even get nowhere close to the end zone. Second things was the announcers. There was players on the game that were getting injured left and right. Like, there was an injury on uh, Bishop Sycamore, like, every five minutes. Wow. The announcers on ESPN, they started to wise up to it, and they were like, we don't have rosters for Bishop. We don't know who these players are. So, at some point, there's players getting hurt on the field, and they, like, up in the booth, you know, they give a number, and they give a name, and they start talking about the player, and, you know, they'd be like, oh, this is what he's done for the season, and it's a shame that he's getting hurt like this. They're like, we don't know who that is. They're like, we would love to talk about who's hurt down there on the field. We have no idea who that is down there. And then somebody else would get hurt. And they're like, we don't know who that is later. What and then later shit. in the broadcast, they're just sitting up there talking because the game's so boring and stuff like that. They're like, we don't actually don't know who these people are. We're like, we don't know if they're actual D1 players. They're not playing like it. We don't even know their names. Yeah. Because they did. They waved their roster to the camera. And they're like, look, we got a list of 12 names here, and none of them are on the field. <laughs> also, what roster has like 12 names on it? It's a football team. Yeah, you have 11 on the field at a time. So you have one backup for the whole fucking (laughs) team. (laughs) So it's getting – everyone's starting to notice. The commentators are noticing it. I think people from IMG Academy started noticing it. But everyone's just like, this team is not who they say they are. This is weird. Um, So it wasn't until after the game that people started to put the pieces together that this is a fake team playing out of a fake high school. And so the conspiracy started, and people started rolling with it. And they're like, this is a fake team from a fake high school, and that's why they're out there playing fake football. And people went, nope, that's crazy. That's ludicrous. Whale. <laughs> Can't wait to see that, is, that, that seems to be the case at the moment. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> they duped ESPN into a nationally televised game, which is the worst thing that they could have done because it put the magnifying glass on their entire operation. Because before, they've been doing this since 2018. What? Um, so basically, um, I'm trying to find the information for it. So basically, the team started up in 2018, right? And basically, what they did is they were pulling in players from high schools, and they were saying, hey, come play for us. We promise you great things. They're like, you come play for us. We'll practice on Ohio State's field. You guys will get the best medical training, and we're going to send you off to D1 schools, and you're going to have a successful college playing career and shit like that. Wow. They had no plans for these players once they actually acquired, them. acquired these players. So the school, there's no actual building. The, the, the high school that they say they play out of doesn't exist. Their mailing address is a P.O. box. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh-huh. Their practice facility doesn't exist. The high school doesn't exist. And the play, the, there's no training fields. There's no facilities. The, there's the staff was 10 coaches that each coach a position. And they said by the end of their first season in 2018, all but one coach had walked out. Because the other nine coaches were afraid they weren't going to get paid. And the only reason the one coach stayed is because he had no better options in his life at the moment. And he didn't want to see all of these high schoolers run around with their heads cut off because they didn't have any coaches. Wow. Um, So they were shown the the way that they brought these players in is they kept showing them blueprints and plans of the high school that they were going to build and all these training facilities and stuff like that. They never had any intention on actually building these facilities. To this day, there's still no facilities. Wow. Um, the players, so they needed somewhere to go because this was supposed to be a private charter school. It has the name Bishop Sycamore, which means that it's it's Catholic. It's yeah. supposed to be a Catholic school. They uh, housed the them in a hotel. Are paying for this? Yeah. The, well, it was all supposed to be paid for them. Oh, okay. That was supposed oh. to be the deal. Was that you play for us, we'll pay for you and stuff like that. That's why we're recruiting you. The players lived in a hotel for five months. Their practice facility was a grass field out back behind the hotel. So they were just practicing. And they said they didn't practice that much. They said they practiced maybe once before they started all their games. Yeah. They said they practiced maybe once. And they said before they went and played all their high school games that year. And 
it's ugly. The head coach uh, allegedly wasn't the head coach, but it turns out he was the athletic director that was behind the entire scheme. And now they're calling it a scheme because they're like, this dude has just been raking in money and he's paying nobody. Oh, Jesus. Was he was he paying for the hotel? Yes, but he kept... I, I'm actually going to get to that. Um, he had an uh, arrest warrant out for fraud Yeah. while coaching yeah. the team because he was writing checks that were bouncing with the hotel which meant that they weren't paying the hotel and all these players were living in the hotel for free because he kept writing them bad checks, oh, faking to fuck. be this Christian high school, right? <laughs> um, and they also Holy scammed shit. a church into funding them, which is why they came up with the Bishop Sycamore name so that they could rake in all these students and be like, hey, we're a Catholic school and we got funding from an actual church. You guys should come play for us because we're a legit team. Yeah. The other thing is it's, it's a high school team, correct? The players never went to school. They said they pretty much lived in that hotel, and that's all they did was they lived in that hotel. Wow. Uh, the biggest guy that came out and said this is uh, he claims that he was the first player ever recruited by the high school. And as soon as the news dropped on Sunday that this might be a scheme, I think it was uh, Complex News came out with an interview with this kid, and he basically told everything. He was like, this is everything. So all this information that I wrote down, most of it is from this kid's account of what happened. And he's all like, and you can ask any of my family. I've been saying this for years. The problem is, is now that it's on ESPN and everybody's aware, now I'm going to say it again so that everybody knows what's happening with this organization. Wow. He said they took us to the library once towards the end of the season. That was it. That was the only class in instruction. They said it was a public library. So they just brought all of these weird high school kids in and just sat them down in the library and stuff like that. He said the weirdest thing that he encountered was they're supposed to be high school kids. He was 15 at the time, a junior in high school. Yeah. He had left high school and he told his mom, I'm going away to play for this school. His mom thought he was going to school the whole time and like playing football and stuff like that. Well, it turns out he was just living in a hotel playing random football games with this team that was living in a hotel. He also noticed Bro. that everybody around him was 19 to 20 years old. He was clearly the youngest player on the team. So he's a 15-year-old playing on a high school team with 20-year-olds. Because what they were doing is they were finding super seniors and people that never graduated high school or weren't even thinking about high school. They just wanted to go play football. Wow. They weren't even authenticating. People that were kind of desperate for the opportunity. People that were desperate for the opportunity to play for somebody bigger. Like, oh, if I play great, maybe a college is going to hire me. That's so that's wild that's man when they were eventually kicked out of the hotel they found a house for the players to live in well the players were just sleeping on the floor because they couldn't afford beds and stuff to put them in because they, all they did was write bounce checks and stuff like that yeah so you have these players that were sleeping on the floor and um, he claims that they had to rob like they went and they robbed Walmarts and stuff like that because that was the only way that they could eat because the team wasn't feeding them wow Jesus. So, and then the worst part about it was that the players were, uh, they grabbed, so they were in Ohio. They were grabbing them from just every which place and stuff like that. Most of the players they grabbed for are from New York, but they're from different boroughs in New York. So you have a bunch of people that are in conflicting neighborhoods that don't like each other, and you just put them all in a house by each other. And with the limited supervision, he says, it wasn't the football, it wasn't the food, it wasn't the school that we're worrying about. It, we were worried about getting stabbed by other people. Because the problem is is that you're putting us in a room with people from inner city, uh, Columbus, Ohio, and people that are mixed from all different neighborhoods in New York. You're putting them all in a room, no supervision. And most of these people are adults. They're not even teenagers. These are people that aren't even thinking about school. They're just living their lives at this point. So he was like, there were stabbings. They happened. (laughs) This is crazy. I'm only halfway down my list on my page. This is is the craziest thing I've, like, stumbled upon, and it's just – it's crazy how far it goes. Um, yeah, students receive promises of something bigger and better, you know, going and playing for bigger D1 colleges. Never happened. Um, and then towards the end of it, they never got the Ohio facilities that they were promised. There was no athletic uh, trainers whatsoever on the team, so that's why all these players are getting hurt and injured when they were playing for IMG. And they never practice. and a bunch of the players had arrest warrants because they were adults. And because these players had arrest warrants, they couldn't fly to most of their games because they couldn't put half the team on a plane because they had arrest warrants. Jesus. So they had to bus everywhere, and they had to find different solutions to get their players where they needed to go. This is supposed to be a high school team with the coach that has a warrant out out, out for his arrest for fraud, and then half the team has arrest warrants because they're just adults trying to fake it and make it. That is insane. So what was their playing record? That's literally the next point. In the year, so I don't know what happened. Uh, th- their, their games from 2018 were recorded. But during the COVID pandemic last year, they jumped on the idea of not many schools were playing. Yeah. 
So they were like, cool, we'll accept invitations to go play anybody in the country because we're the best D1 school. Oh, fuck. In 2020, they went 0-6, and, <laughs> and they were outscored in those games combined 227-42. to 42. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> they scored four. That is a touchdown <laughs> a game. They scored a touchdown a game and got outscored two hundred twenty-seven points. I don't know what two hundred twenty-seven divided by seven is. That's how many points were scored on them average per game. Wow. They were terrible, absolutely. I'd love to see the spread too. Like I'm sure it was like three this one game and yeah. one bishop one, sycamore one, three two. <laughs> They launched a GoFundMe, right, because they were running out of money. And they were like, we need to get our players into hotels because they wanted to play in big tournaments. They were like, we're going to go play in big tournaments, and we're going to win. But what we need is the funding of the community to help us put in the hotels because the problem is is they weren't filling out paperwork. They didn't have any of the money up front. They had no rosters to give people, so they were getting denied tournaments. Well, they were going out and saying, oh, it's because we don't have money. We need funding. They launched a GoFundMe for 20. They needed $20,000 they wanted to raise. Jesus Christ. Guess how much they got. Like a hundred bucks, a hundred and forty dollars. That oh, was close. Their damn. official GoFundMe received a hundred and forty dollars. Wow! So the public wasn't even wising up to these guys because nobody knows who they are. They're supposed to be a high school, but they're not. I've There's never no heard location. Of Bishop Sycamore. Exactly. We're getting to that part. <laughs> <laughs> Came to a boiling point on August 29th of 2021 when this last Sunday they finally played IMG Academy on a nationally broadcasted game on ESPN. At the Hall of Fame field in Canton, Ohio. We were just talking about the Hall of Fame earlier, and I was like, cool, we're coming back to it later. That's the field where they play the Hall of Fame game um, in the NFL preseason every year. So the first NFL preseason is the Hall of Fame game. So it's like a very special field. It's a very special field, and they only let certain people play on them. Like I said, there's one NFL game on it a year, and then they only let the top high school teams play on it. Holy shit. And you have I am the best team in the country facing this these guys that are just like hey you're, let's go you're play them for rot, for fraud and you get arrested for just like just a bunch of convicts you go, to super you, go prison, you take all this time to not put these people on fucking planes and shit to get caught that they're they have warrants and shit and you go like you know what let's put them on TV you're gonna be arrested for like conspiracy <laughs> type crimes like what seriously the though half the team thinks they're actually doing something and the other team is. From the other, or from the longest yard. <laughs> the absolute <laughs> skill gap, yeah. I think if you put the team from the longest yard out there, they would play better than this team. Yeah. Oh, man. Because, like, if you watch highlights from this game, it's clear they're not good at all. <sighs> if They needed Tracy Morgan as their cheerleader. That's, the, that's what went wrong. <laughs> I'm almost done with this story, too. And it's just, this story is just ridiculous. Um, so, as you know, IMG won 58-0. to It wasn't competitive at all. Um, the coach of Bishop Sycamore, yeah, they're one of the top results on I Google. See, like, and the logo. Yeah. So their coach was told to forfeit after the first quarter. Like the peop- the, the committee wow. came up to them. They said, we, you guys need to forfeit. It looks bad out there. They're like, you guys are getting killed, and it's going to keep happening. And he said, no. <laughs> they wanted to put a running game clock out in the game. He said, no. <laughs> what? They wanted to get rid of the running game clock because they're like, we just need to choose much time before this game ends. He's like, no, we're playing a legit game. We're not doing any of that. So he what made his players endure the punishment of yeah, getting they were whipped getting for four quarters. Yeah, and then they were getting injured left and right on the field. Because they, they had no practice. They had no training. They were facing like a professional team. Do you know, wow. how, do you know where I started to, like the part of the story that I think is royally fucked up? They played a game two days before in Pennsylvania. Yeah. They played two football games in three days. Wow. That's why everybody was out there getting injured because they played another school in Pennsylvania. And then rode two a days before. bus. Rode a bus and then faced the best team in the nation. So these poor kids were already exhausted, had no clue what they were doing Just in the first place. Just played a football place. game the two days before, which if you've ever played a game of full contact football for 60 minutes, the it's, last thing you want to do is play another game in two days. Yeah, that's some serious physical so, wear on the guy. From Friday to Saturday. And they're not being fed. Yeah, I'm talking about they played a game last Friday eight days ago and then played this last Sunday six days ago. That's how recent this all happened. Can you imagine last wow. Friday getting off of work? And then having to go back to work Sunday morning, and you think, man, that was a short weekend. Imagine that, but you just played a full contact game of football. Yeah, today is September 4th. Jeez. This is a very recent news story, and it's absolutely fucked up. Um, and they lost to that school 19-7. to So it was a little bit more competitive, but at least they're averaging out at their seven points that they've scored in the 2020 <laughs> season. At least they get one. 
Um, and this, this story's already gotten so much attention that Kevin Hart's entertainment company, uh, <laughs> Heartbeat Productions, they're already working on a docu-series for it. Are wow. you serious? Already. So there's going to be a Kevin Hart-led docu-series on this pretty soon. Wow. And I am 100% going to check it out when it comes out oh, because yeah. – I don't know. This is like the biggest thing since Tiger King. I mean, if you Google <laughs> Bishop on Google, if you just go to Google and Google Bishop, mm-hmm. it's the first thing that comes up. So oh. it's not hard to find. The last thing that I didn't talk about is Jordan said, I like I, nobody's ever heard of this school. What is he as a bishop sycamore? Yeah, it's not a bishop. Ro- the Roman Catholic Diocese of Columbus had no record of a bishop named Sycamore. So they just made up the name as well. They didn't uh, even try to go through the legitis- legitimacy of finding an actual bishop to name it after. They fake name that sounded kind of school-like. And it, it took this national game that happened this last Sunday for people to finally go, what is Bishop Sycamore? And now it is just blown up. And Cam Newton is going to sign with them, and they are going to be great. <laughs> well, fucking A, more power to him. I can't wait to see Cam Newton I, play for him. Mm-hmm. This is gonna blow open like high school football, dude. They're finding out like a bunch of shit now too because of COVID, like teacher abuse and all kinds of shit. This is this is dogpiling into like a weird situation. I totally forgot that this started with Cam Newton talking about them. Oh, Cam Newton <laughs> signing or people <laughs> saying that he's gonna sign with them. He yeah. might. If you look up Bishop Sycamore, Cam Newton, you probably find some Photoshop photos. <laughs> But this entire, I just wanted to talk about it. This entire situation's crazy. And when this docuseries comes out, I'm going to watch it 100%. Ha! Breaking! <laughs> Bishop Sycamore signing Cam Newton. So is, is that the thumbnail? Yep. Do they have, <laughs> yep. Is that their logo? Yeah, that's their high, that's the school logo because they're supposed to be the Centurions. <laughs> the Centurions. Wow. So I'm going to get a sweatshirt with Bishop Sycamore football on it because right. I think it's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. So where on like Tumblr or DeviantArt is there just some like logo artist and they stole like this Centurion logo? Pretty oh, much. I, I feel like nobody drew that. They like just some, stole some it. Etsy seller has a sticker. Every Bishop Sycamore touchdown in 2021. Click it. It's going to bring It's 11 to seconds video. long. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> It's an 11 second video. There's so. one touchdown. I think so. It's no, the one that they scored in that pe- against that Pennsylvania team. Yep, here it is. Wow, they were actually winning. <laughs> oh, and um, every team that they have slated on their schedule has canceled their game against them because they refuse to play these guys now. Now that they're a national story. <laughs> so every right now, all of out. their entire schedule is cleaned because every team they were supposed to face is backed out. They said we're not doing it. We're not dumb enough. Bishop Sycamore. Yeah, this video came out yesterday. Oh, <laughs> that's Jesus, wild. Dude. Forever will we remember the name Bishop Sycamore in high school football. Do you think Reed could beat Bishop Sycamore? Probably. Yeah. That's a question, dude. <laughs> nice teeth. <laughs> that, yeah. f- that photo looks so edited. Like, look at how the like sunlight is hitting his face <laughs> under the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> but nowhere else on the fucking helmet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Breaking. Bishop Sycamore signing Cam Newton. <laughs> yeah, that is wild. I mean, the absolute. I I I feel bad for all of the kids involved because there were some people that signed up with the impression that they really were changing their lives around, and it's yeah. just, it's a scam. Last chance kind of Sandra Bullock blindside raking type of right. money, like like those kinds of kids, and they're completely denied their future. The team fired the coach, and they were like, "Oh, <coughs> we didn't know about all this." Yeah. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Okay. It's like, sir, you didn't have you anywhere to go to work. You crazy fucking circus clown. <laughs> if you think your football, your favorite NFL team is dysfunctional, this will, <coughs> this will bring it back into a light of at least it's a professional team because this is... But these guys were parading themselves around like they were a legit high school team. And the fact that they were able to dupe ESPN and get a nationally televised game speaks volumes about ESPN's track history and just uh, sitting there and doing basic research into these people. So shame on ESPN for even televising that game and setting it up. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, how do you not you know, research? They should have known. Disney owned. Type it into Google, and if an address doesn't come up, shit, it might be a little sus, bruh. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> All right, well, we've been at it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, we have. So she's getting late. Yeah, it is. I'm trying to think. So, yeah, we're, we're well over an hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're oh, good. Well. Oh, well. We've been here a bit. Yeah. The football story's... I mean, that's just, that's insane how yeah. somebody can go so far with, such with a, not even a school. 
and not even there's like no a, building. This place doesn't exist. How was this guy taking these kids across the country? Scam. Like, and at what point, like. How do the parents never figure it out, bro? Yeah. Over like, why is my child not of, eating dinner? Like even you just, motherfucker. No matter how like you said what twenty eighteen like years twenty eighteen was when it started. Yeah. So like f- four years, whatever. But even just these past two years, I, I'm like, how the fuck? Like you guys get outscored. How the hell? What did I say? Two hundred twenty seven to forty two in twenty twenty, and you still come back for another like, year and get yeah. it. Crazy, and nobody notices. Until nobody now. noticed they played a game two days before they were on ESPN. Huh. Nobody noticed they anything. There'd yeah. be a lot of pissed off parents in this county nobody if you made, made a, a high Google school search. team play two nobody days, a, two games a weekend. It yeah. took a yeah. Google search. Well, yeah, I mean, why did no one That's do like, their research before making a televised game like I, that? I it, doubt there was a website. In the NFL, the shortest turnaround between a game now with Thursday night games becoming normal is you play Sunday, and then you play another game on Thursday. And players already complain about that. Can you imagine playing Sunday, then Tuesday? That's ridiculous. You get one day rest, and that day of rest was probably traveling. Yeah, fuck. Ridiculous. It's, it's, it's a crazy story. I couldn't believe it when I first heard it, because I, I heard memes about it. Because, like I said, I found out about it. Because when Cam Newton was released, everyone's like, he's going to go sign with Bishop Sycamore. I'm like, who the fuck is Bishop Sycamore? So I started looking him up. I was like, wow, these guys. Look how yeah. fucking small that football looks in his hand. Yeah, Cam Newton's 6'5", 250. Yeah, professional fucking he's footballs a big are guy. Like that goddamn yeah. big. Cam Newton like, is big. He's huge balls. Huge balls. Man, yeah, yeah daddy. Daddy. The balls that they toss around, around are bigger than any balls that I've ever seen, except for rugby balls. I just have a fucking fingers rugby ball. balls or big balls. Yeah, I've seen big balls. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Me too. Like rugby balls. You put a rugby ball next to a football, it looks like two balls, but one's bigger <laughs> than the other ball. Wow. wow. If you put them in a sack, one would probably hang lower than the other. Absolutely. Okay. Well, seriously, though, that looks tiny in his fucking hand. It looks <laughs> like a Nerf ball. <laughs> Cyrus, that was a wild fucking story. I can't believe. I was like, we have to talk about this. There's yeah. No way. I mean, that's preposterous, right? In this day and age, with so much technology, it's at the tip of your finger. I'm li- literally, a Google search would have proven that there was no school behind this. There were no pictures, no and maps, no nothing. ESPN yeah. televised it. What channel? Like, their ESPN. channel? ESPN 1. The main wow. ESPN channel. How fucking insane is that? Well, think how, about- it, how, much it, how much shit is the coach in? Uh, he was fired, but I don't. I I guess there's legal action because now uh, the high school committee in Columbus is looking at him and shit like that. It's like, yeah, you guys weren't looking at him before because they didn't have a building for three years. Yeah, not one parent did any research into who the like. What they were the like, oh, you got was. invited to this. But sure, I go. sent my child to. Also, what? remember that there was to ni- fucking where they went to a hotel. <laughs> like, Ni- Nineteen to twenty year olds were playing for the team, so some of these people yeah. were just adults at this yeah. point. None of yeah. the kids were like, yeah, we're getting stabbed. Yeah. So was the 15-year-old, like, the only legitimate high school, he high said, school year? He or? said he was legitimately the only person that was, like, actually in high school when they came to that team. Wow. The all, He's like, because everybody else was, like, 20. Jesus. And they're out there getting whipped by a bunch of high schoolers because they didn't really practice or ever play. That's so fucking crazy. Huh. All right. Well, that's all for this episode. That's been a big ramble. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know the usual links. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Cobb Bros PC. La 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 light. Comment and subscribe if you've made it this far. Yeah, let us know what you think. Your feedback is important to us. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Let us know. Was that rant fun? Wasn't it fun? Was it Cam Newton? Are you Cam Newton? If you're Cam Newton, let me know in the comments below. Yeah, Cam Newton. If you made it this far, just type lasagna in the comments. Cool. Okay. I love you, Cam Newton. I'm more <laughs> focused on that just lasagna comment from Cam. <laughs> enjoying video games, but, uh, you know. Thank you for being on the <laughs> podcast this week, Jordan. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah, no problem, yeah, man. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to posting this show in Reno when we all clearly live in New York. <laughs> <laughs> we're, in the, we're in the different boroughs right now. Yeah. Yep. It's just a really big table.
versus a kid from Columbus. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.